Good evening. And welcome to this memorial service. We are grateful that you came and uh, gathered tonight here so we can pray, remember, let God's love fall on us to comfort and support each of you and your families. We are grateful for the gift of, the, of your loved ones' lives. They touched all of us here at St. Paul deeply. And we remember them with great love, with devotion, and remembering how much our God loves us. Because each person that has walked through our doors has taught us something about how great and how wonderful God's love is for us. So thank you for wanting to be a part of this evening. Welcome to all as we honor the memory of loved ones who have gone home to heaven in the months of July, August, and September. We pray that God will comfort you and continue to bring you healing. May all those we honor be enjoying the radiant face of God. May you feel the Lord's hand on you. You are precious in God's sight. May we never forget how much our God loves us and cares for us. Jesus leads us each day in this journey of life. The grace of God goes before us each day. Be open to what God wants. His love is real and deep. Love heals like nothing else. Please join in singing Only This I Want. It's found in the hymnal, number 505. And we will do all the verses if you will find it meaningful. <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious God, source of all goodness and mercy, you manifest your abundant love in the person of Jesus, who gave himself totally for us. As we celebrate the memory of these loved ones, we ask you to look with kindness on all of the family members and friends. Pour your healing grace upon all our families. Let everyone experience the warmth of your great tenderness and love. Your word reminds us, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. I am with you always. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Eternal life means this, to know and experience you as the only true God, and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the Son whom you have sent. The Gospel of the Lord. We surely would like to have a clear and a simple way to describe who you are. Moses tried to ask you once, and you answered, I am who am. That's what Moses heard you say. And I guess that sort of sums it up, but can we say we really know you, God? You know us, but we have a hard time really capturing what, who you are. I have thought about this since I was a really little girl, like God is all-knowing. What does that mean anyway? How does, how does an all-knowing God exist? We humans would like to know more than we do, but we find ourselves quite limited in this department when we compare ourselves. What must it be like to understand all the mysteries of the universe, which have amazed and baffled people since the beginning of time? And speaking of time, what about time? What's it like to say that life is eternal? A state of being where there is no time. It's crazy to imagine being timeless, I think. God knows that we cannot understand everything there is to know, and we certainly cannot fathom eternity. It is beyond us, literally. One thing that we do know is that experience is a very good teacher. If you read about something from a book or a manual or um, see it on YouTube maybe, you might get a pretty good idea about something. For example, you could get knowledge from reading about lightning, but if you experience lightning up close and personal, then you really know what lightning is. And it is very unlikely that anybody could tell you that lightning doesn't exist, because you, you were there. You know that it exists. You saw it, you felt it, you heard it, the whole thing. And I'm thinking right now about another kind of knowledge, or the taste. I'm good at that. I love the taste of steak or a delicious ice cream or a great salad bar. You cannot tell me that those good tastes are not real, because I've experienced them all. <laughs> and I am thinking how wonderful that is, the experience. Maybe the experience of a breathtaking view from an airplane. 
Maybe you are thinking about the miracle of a birth of a child, or the warmth of a quiet fireplace. Most of us have had the joy that comes from finishing a book or putting the final touch on a very special project. We all love listening to a beautiful choir or experiencing a symphony. And then there is the experience of receiving a genuine word of praise from somebody who means a lot to us. We remember the experience of holding the hand of someone we love. Experiences are really powerful and they shape us. If you were there, if you saw it, if you heard it, if you felt it, or you tasted it, good or bad, that experience is engraved somewhere in your being, in your heart, in your life. Our memorial service tonight helps us to reflect on the experience of life, the experience of the death of 22 special people that we got to know here at St. Paul's. This experience is very personal for each of you because you were there. One of these 22 people was your loved one. You know the feeling of love because you were there. You also now know the pain of letting go and feeling loss. How often have you heard the expression, I am sorry for your loss? People say it, you've said it, written it in their condolence card. A feeling of loss is very real at a time like this. There are so many kinds of losses though, as we know, a recent election wasn't all about winning, that's for sure. No one likes the idea of losing, but it happens. Recently, a friend of mine lost her job, and another friend lost his job, too. And a man we know from our parish is now raising three small children because his wife passed away with cancer. And as we know, lots of people in Florida and North Carolina, Arkansas, Oklahoma, California, people even much closer to us have lost everything, everything they once had because of storms or floods or fire. Some people have gone through a different kind of loss, the loss of communication with somebody in the family. And if you've ever gone through that, you know how painful that is, feeling abandoned by somebody in the family or friends, whether it is real or imagined, it's still traumatic and a loss. People in every age group have had an injury at one time or another, resulted in the loss of activity or mobility. We can go through our therapy section and we can go through, you know, see people of all ages. This definitely feels like a loss because it feels like there's practically no independence right now. No place, you know, for me to go quickly. It's, go, it's that little spirit of independence is gone, at least temporarily. And even a healthy team member Everyone experiences losses, some more than others, but they learn that you can't win every game. Even, even Kimberly can't win every game. So, and then I know that Julie Andrews, she's still living in her 90s, but as you may know, she can no longer sing. And what a loss that must be for somebody like her. And sadly, places like the Middle East or the Ukraine or Soviet Union, places in Africa, people in a lot of places in the world have had to endure months, maybe years, of violence and war. That is unimaginable to me. I can't imagine what that must be like, but it surely must take a toll on the military and the innocent citizens and everyone really, because everyone is a victim when it comes to war. This is a pretty long list of losses, 
probably too long, <laughs> but yet it is not conclusive. The point is that every loss is difficult to bear, but God knows what it feels like too. He knows every loss, every single loss, every loss that anyone goes through on their way toward eternity. Now I want to go back to the thoughts about eternity and eternal life. I believe in eternity because I believe in Jesus and I believe that Mary, the Blessed Mother, and all the saints also understood the reality of eternal life. They witness to it. We can look to them, to Jesus, to Mary, and all the saints, we can look to them now for inspiration and for help whenever we wonder about eternal life. And we do wonder because we haven't been there yet, but someday when we experience it ourselves, we will know what eternal life is. And as you clearly know, your loved one has entered into eternity. Life is not ended, as we always say, it's changed, but not ended. If you ever wonder what it is all about, you can reflect on the mystery with someone who is real to you. Someone who you knew and loved is already there. You don't need help to know what loss is, you have felt it. But if you need help as you walk along the road and what loneliness and loss is, I think you can count on your loved one to be your best companion as you walk that road. I hope that thinking about eternal life and thinking about loss has helped in some small way tonight. I would like to conclude then with the short passage which began this reflection that um, Pam read. If you would now, we're going to look at that passage one more time and we're going to read it together and try to be moved by this good news that came from St. John, the evangelist. We will be talking to God in this line. It's, it's very short, so we'll be talking to God as we read. Eternal life means to know, to know and experience you as the only true God, and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the Son whom you have sent. And we did sing it too, only this I want, but to know the Lord and to bear his cross, so to wear the crown he wore. Number 475, 475.
Let us pray. Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise him. Praise the Lord, all peoples. <laughs> Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise him, all peoples. His love for us is strong. His faithfulness is eternal. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His love is eternal. In my distress, I called to the Lord. He answered me and set me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Listen to the glad shouts of victory in the tents of God's people. The Lord's mighty power has done it. His power has brought us victory. You are my God, and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good, and his love is eternal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This candle is a symbol of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. He has taken away the darkness of sin and death and given the promise of eternal life to all who believe in him. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you gave yourself up to death so all people might be saved and pass from death to eternal life. Listen to our prayers Look with love on us and on our loved ones as we lift their names to you. Thank you for the gift of their lives. Thank you for the memories of their love and devotion to you. We remember these loved ones and the impact on our lives. Richard Ann Heyer. Patrick Campbell. Dan Connard. Margie Davis. Jim Didier. Lucia Janess, Paul Gerard, Irene Hippus, Peter Johnson. Don Laments, Father Ben Markwell, Dolores Minert, Janice Minsloff, Joyce Muniz, David Nagan, Gerald Nidas, Ruth Pansloff.
Jeanette Spiner. Father Joachim Strell. Douglas Vandenberg. Patricia Zimmer. response to our petitions is, Lord, hear us. For our country, for healing, we pray. Lord, hear us. For world leaders to work for peace and justice, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all we remember at this memorial service, may they be held in love and goodness by our loving God. We pray. Lord, hear us. For the families of those we remember, may they know the great compassion of God. We pray. Lord, hear us. For the sick and suffering of the world, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all at St. Paul Elder Services, we pray. Lord, hear us. For the dying, we pray. Lord, hear us. Loving God, we lift these petitions to you. We know that you know what we need. Bless our world. Bless all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And together let us pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God, you surround us with a loving community. Thank you for calling us into deeper healing and peace. Thank you for loving us in profound ways. May we not be afraid to follow you. May we ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace. Amen. And let us sing, we walk by faith, number 515.
invite you to a little social down in the lobby. We invite you to continue to share stories with one another because those stories keep your loved ones very alive and precious to us all. God bless you. Have a holy night.